On today's show, could Luka Doncic have his flu game? What adjustments could the Dallas Mavericks make in game two? And we actually do have to talk about if Luka is sick or not. We'll say everything that we happened to us at practice today, everything that we heard, talk about all that and more on today's Like I'm Ass. Let's go. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks Podcast. Hey, hey, Dallas Mavericks are NBA champions. He shouldn't be here. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making Locked On Mavs your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, where you can subscribe to the show. And the best way to help us grow is to comment below. Score prediction. Let's do score prediction for game two. What's your score prediction? How much do you think the Mavericks win by? Answer that in the comments below. And joining me, as always, my co-host, contributor, and writer at Mavs.com, the Golden Gate guy, the one more thing, King. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? We did see the bridge. We went to the bridge today. Today. We spent that (laughs) Uber money uh, to go over and see a a massive bridge. Uh, But it was worth it. It was cool. Um, No, we've had the intern drive us around everywhere. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, the intern got us lunch and uh, you know brought lunch to us at, at the bridge. If you'd like to apply for Lockdown Mavs internship, uh, applications will be coming up as soon as the last game ends for the, <laughs> the off season. Um, just send them to uh, Nick's email. But man, I was yeah. also almost waiting for you to put my email out on the pod. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, we had a we had an off day, off ish day in uh, in the bay, and saw saw the bridge and uh, ate at a few places. And shout out to Andy, owner, yeah, of a bar restaurant here in downtown San Francisco, listener of Locked On Mavs and Mavs fan here in San Francisco. And I uh, just want to shout out to him. It's cool. Some Mavs fans stopped by, talked about the series, had some drinks, had some good food. So if you're in San Francisco, go to Schroeder's. Yeah, Schroeder's is awesome. We enjoyed it a ton. And a bit, we're not the only people enjoying San Francisco a little bit because it seemed like Luka Doncic was not himself in game one. And we speculated a whole bunch of reasons why he could have been. The, you know, the three-point shots didn't go down. It seemed like he was getting frustrated, but... Kevin Harlan went on KNBR, radio station here in the Bay. And Kevin Harlan, the play-by-play broadcaster for TNT, he's been calling the Mavericks games. And he went on KNBR, and he said he had some things to say. He said, I hear he's sick today, talking about Luka. I guess he was up most of the night. This would have been Thursday night, so or Wednesday night heading into Thursday, so after game one. I hear he was up most of the night and ill. I've heard it now from two different people, so I'm assuming it's probably true. He clarified that the two sources that he had were not part of the Warriors or the Mavericks organization. So I'm not sure exactly who those people could have been that knew Luca and could tell Kevin Harlan this information. But uh, he talked about that if Luca was ill uh, or his alleged symptoms began after the final buzzer, he didn't he you know didn't hear that. And he said the body language that he showed, just the zest that he showed in Game 7 in Phoenix was not there last night. And I'm not sure if perhaps he was a little bit under the weather during the game. He didn't play like he played in the Sun Series, that's for sure. And he needed every ounce of what he gives, and that was not apparent. Isaac Harris, are we buying into Luka was sick and didn't feel fully 100%? Oh, I think we just need to wait for more information on that. Um you know, we we walked into practice. Two unknown and, sources from Kevin Harlan is not enough for you. I'm just saying, I think we need more information <laughs> okay. on that for for, for the public. <laughs> Let's change the subject, Nick. Um, but but no, you know, we'll we'll say this part. You know, we walked into practice today, and as soon as practice ends, media can walk in. You know, to the to the court there. Mavericks practiced at at Chase Center on the main court there. And we walk in, you know, and the whole team's in their practice gear. They're going, you know, music's blasting. They're doing shooting drills, goofing around, doing their whole thing. Uh, the only player that I could note, I've seen out there that was not doing any of that was Luka Doncic, who was sitting over on the side wearing his Jordan, you know, his logo, his branded hoodie, had his sweatpants on. Um, he had his shoes on, had, you know, his signature one there. But um, he was, you know, he was watching his tablet. He was just—he never really moved the whole time we were there. So, and we we thought he was watching film. 
And yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was watching Real Madrid in the Euro Cup final. But. Yeah, so, I mean, take that for whatever it is. I mean, it, it could be nothing. But And by the time you listen to this podcast, it might have you know, came out already about it, you know how he fit, how he feels right now. But anyway, compare that going with Kevin Harlan's um, – you know stuff today on the radio. I could totally see that. I mean, he he didn't normally. When we you see that after a practice, or you see Luca at a shoot around or anything. Like he's shooting half court shots. He's having fun. Yeah, he's right. smiling. He's right. doing his whole thing. So it was a little like, oh, wonder what's you know going on there type of thing. But we'll just wait to see what else comes out. Yeah, we. I don't know if we can put two and two together, but we probably will. <laughs> if Luca was struggling like that and looked like he was struggling last night, seemed like you know he wasn't. Uh, necessarily didn't look like, at least to us, that he had participated in practice. He could have, and then just put on the sweats really quick and started watching film, but Mm. we're not sure about that either. So definitely something to monitor going into game two. Hopefully Thursday night going into Friday, he feels better, you know, gets gets good night's sleep, isn't out with Boban at cafes with Igor. (laughs) Like we were... And, uh, and it's much better for game two. So definitely something to watch. But I don't blame that photo, by the way. I know some people <laughs> really had fun with that that photo. Mavericks, you know, obviously released a statement after they were told, you know, TMZ or whoever that, hey, that, that, photo, was, a statement. that photo was not from game day and all of that. So I, I'm not... I'm not here in the camp to be like, oh, Luca's out, you know, and I'm not here with that yet. Let's talk about some adjustments the Mavericks can make in game two. The first one for me is, is super easy mm. said, but not super easy done. But it's definitely something the Mavericks need to do, and I think they will. This is the adjustment I think they absolutely can make. If you say make shots, I'm going to smack you. <laughs> That's my second adjustment. Okay, okay. Breathe. Just breathe. Like we got big adjustments here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, we're, is we're this really, all the prep you've been really, doing? Yeah, over here? I've been sitting over here doing. Nick prep. was like, "Hey, I got to rewatch some of this game. I got to figure out some adjustments to talk about on the pod." Breathe is the first one you came Just up. Just breathe. It felt like so many things were rushed. It felt like so much was about nervousness. It felt like so much was about you know tighten sphincters and you know all that kind of stuff. It just felt like the Mavericks need you know going into that game. This was another game one. It was it was felt eerily similar to game one of the Sun series where the moment seemed a little bit too big for them. Now, the Mavericks got a better start than they did in that game one against the Suns, but mm. there were still moments in that game where I go back and look and say, guys, just just breathe. It's okay. The over-closing out, the throwing up quick shots. Now, they got some open shots, but they weren't you know they weren't completely set in their shots. They're like, oh, we may not get another open shot in this possession. I got to throw this one up real quick. It, just, you know, just breathe, settle in, Settle into and let the game slow down. The Mavericks play much better when they're slowed down. Now, the pace, Steve Kerr pointed this out today in his presser, that the pace was slow. Uh, you know, there's only 84 possessions in what Cleaning the Glass considers, uh, like, usable play. So they took out garbage time. <laughs> there's only, like, 84 possessions in garbage time. He also credited the regular play. Yeah, he also credited the Mavs in that, too, of saying it's – it's so hard to speed the Mavs up. Yes. You yeah. know, Kurt, you know, talking to us today of the sand that of like, hey, like they are so like they are so methodical in their offense and they're going to play at us. A, at a, it's almost like he's kind of given in to that of saying, all right, like we're not going to be able to speed this team up at all. <laughs> right. And the Mavericks play at their own pace. And, and that's another thing that continues on. We'll talk about that in the third segment. We talk about practice and we talk about some of the comments we heard. We sat through like an hour of Warriors media availability today as well and ask a few questions the, too. the the warriors have been very complimentary of the mavericks they you know they they're respecting the opponent which which we you know we you really appreciate but well i mean even kerr i mean he, he was asked i think it was, i think eddie or brad one of those guys asked him about the animosity in this series and yes. the the you know the intensity of this series if it's going to get grittier and nasty. and all you know nasty and you know they asked this you know Steve Kerr that first Steve Kerr says well yeah you know basically it's, it's the <laughs> you playoffs. think it will get nasty Steve Kerr yes <laughs> yeah so you know then you know Otto Porter comes in Draymond comes in after that they ask kind of the same thing to Draymond Draymond's like nah neither <laughs> n- neither one of us are really built like that and, yeah. and and it's more of like a respect of like he's like we're not like a dirty team we're not a you know that type of team he said Dallas isn't that type of team either like we respect each other like that whole thing and then you know he's like you know Memphis what, is yeah he's like Memphis <laughs> is and, and then he you know he playing the whole like yeah what's their name is it like grit grind grit something he I don't, said he said grit and 
and he tried to like try, tried to find the word and said like 18 different things. <laughs> I think he was trying to find Grind City. I think is what he was trying to find. Chris Vernon's like, hey, 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 uh, I have a whole media company. But, but no, it, it just goes into, I think both of these teams really respect each other. Yeah. Draymond obviously is, you know, the most passionate guy in Golden State. He respects the heck out of Luka. Luke, I mean, they they praise each other. The coaching staffs praise each other. Draymond is his post game podcast was praising Jason Kidd and how well the co- how coach the team is. Yep. The other guys like there's there's just a lot of respect between both teams that it would kind of surprise me if it if it came down to like something like the Suns Mavs and yeah. we're all just hating each other. And there's a couple more comments Draymond made in that that I definitely want to talk about. We'll get into that uh, in the third segment and then. But coming up. Let's dive into some more actual, like, real adjustments that we think the Mavericks could make in this game. So we'll talk about that and more. But before we do, let me tell you about Built Bar. It's a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. They're absolutely delicious. I eat them all the time. You ate one today. I did have one today. The birthday (laughs) cake puff. Birthday cake puff is delicious. Uh, I love the brownie batter puff. That one right now is uh is available you can go get it they're they're trying to push them we met with the ceo of built bar and he's like hey we're trying to push these brownie batter puffs and we're like hey i will push that because i think they are the best bar that they make 140 calories uh 17 grams of protein and seven grams of sugar that's it only five added grams of sugar that's it that's all that's in this bar that is so good that I honestly would rather eat this brownie batter puff bar than any other bar. If you love chocolate, if you love brownie taste, you will love this bar, and it's pretty good for you. We even have a host on this network that has lost 40, almost 50 pounds mm. by replacing some of his, you know, the food that he was eating with Built Bar. So check them out. Use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your entire order at Built.com. All right, you Isaac. Smack that soundboard. <laughs> I get to see you actually hit these buttons in person. I was going to say, I almost said that now that the soundboard is between us, that you can hit some of the buttons. Hey! hey! Oh, dang, they keep on playing. <laughs> With great power comes great responsibility. There you go. Play around. There's there's pages and all that. A couple adjust, a couple more adjustments. <laughs> like you're like my dad. This is a positive world. <laughs> oh, this is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> keep on no keep going you do this to me all the time a couple <laughs> <laughs> couple more adjustments the mavericks can make i'll do this one yes, sir. That's what- oh sorry did i do that <laughs> i'll do this one don't overreact wow you're coming up with some great I'm coming adjustments. up with some big ones here <laughs> don't overreact the best defense the Mavericks can play, and they do have to play better defense, but the best defense they could play starts with a better offense. So, How many of Steph Curry's rebounds, he had 12 rebounds, and Otto Porter and Draymond were both kind of laughing and joking yeah. about just Steph getting 12 rebounds uh, because, you know, he probably made it a big deal in the locker room. Like, oh, I, got, yeah. I led the team in rebounding, like little Steph Curry. He's probably, like, pointing at Wilt's. Like Jersey in the rafters saying, hey, I got you. Or Wilt's like silhouette on the wall or like caricature on the wall all over the place. They have all this art on the wall where there's different like famous Warriors players and he was probably like pointing at Wilt all the way down the hallway. Wilt, but the so guy. many of Steph Curry's rebounds ended up in these transition fast breaks where Luka is behind the play. Brunson is behind the play. So many guys are behind the play because they just, you know, drove drove through the basket, kicked out, and they flew th- past the basket stanchion, kicked out to a three-point shooter, and then they missed. And then all of a sudden, Curry gets a long rebound and then runs, and it's like a three-on-four. It's like a four-on-three or something like that. They have to not overreact because those shots will, will hit. Like they, they will hit those shots, and if they don't, I mean, it's over. But... Yeah. They have to hit those shots. Yeah, they have to. I mean, they, they attempted 48 three-pointers, and 28 of them were uncontested. Good morning, Isaac. <laughs> that's what I said. That's what I said this morning. This is my, <laughs> this is my soundboard. Um, but, but I mean. Hold on. Say that stat again, though, because I undercut it. No, I mean, they, they attempted 48 three-pointers, and, you know, I, I think uh, 28 of them uh, were uncontested in that. And it's yeah. just like. 44 were open or wide open, right? So open is like defenders four to six feet away. Wide open is like farther than that. Yeah. That's insane. 44 of the 48 shots were open threes or wide open threes. According okay. to StatMuse. That's crazy. Are we still using StatMuse? Or- <laughs> <laughs> um, however you want to slice that. A bunch of different ways to look at that. Uncontested. Uh, 
distance between the defender. They, they were good shots. They had a ton of open threes. And that's the thing. I, I've been sitting there laughing at Nick's like adjustments. But here's my thing. As you should. I don't think that there's a ton of adjustments to make. Because oh, well, you're laughing at I'm gonna, my no, I'm gonna I'm gonna zag a little bit on this and and say because there was I thought that the game plan of it was actually well looking back on looking back on some of these numbers like you look at this Warriors team they were third in the league in three point attempts per game they attempted typically 39 three pointers a game yeah they forced them just to take 29 they didn't even take three you know 33s in this game this is the same game plan that they, you kind of trotted out against Utah of saying hey you attempt 43s a game which was number one the Warriors are number three in the league and you know what they they never attempted over 35 in the in that series yeah. Utah did so you forced them to take twos it's just Golden State hit their twos they were 13 of 22 on long twos 13 of 22 like this was even a talking point after the game of Wiggins long twos the you know those pull up jumpers Otto, Otto Porter, Porter Otto Porter talked about it today in his you know his media availability so it's like all right, you're going to force it. Your game plan was to force the Warriors out of what they like to do, which is take threes and say, hey, you're not, we're not even going to give you like lay, like as far as like getting to the rim and scoring at the rim, which we can look at some of those numbers. But like, what are you trying to force them to do? Take long twos. Yeah. So you did that. They just, they just executed them that. Like, they took advantage. A lot of their post game comments saying, hey, we, we just took advantage of what they gave us. We know that they were going to give us the long two. And for Dallas in the in missing the three, it's like once again we kind of said this last night. I'm much happier saying, "Man, we missed a ton of threes instead of man, we didn't even get enough threes off." It's like they got 48 threes in this game. They had good shots, they just didn't make them. In the first half, the Warriors were 17 of 21 from two. That's see that that's wild. And like we all saw the Kevon Looney, you know, long two. It's like all right, come on, here we are. This is where we're at right now. But you know what happens of. You know, when you miss that many three pointers, I mean, what was the total count? 36, 30, 30, you missed 37 three pointers. Well, you know what's going to happen when you miss 37 three pointers? One, you're going to get Steph Curry getting 12 rebounds because yeah. it's long rebounds. Steph's going to get it. Two, you're going to get fast break points on the other side. Golden State had 18 fast break points in this game. So it's so many of these things that just didn't work out for the, for the Mavs. It has these trickle, you know, triple trickle down effects of you miss a three, okay, results in more more rebounds for for Golden State, in which it results in more fast break points for Golden State. So, I just I, there's not a ton of the things that I'm looking at what Dallas did, and said so, there's some small things like I'm looking at Jalen Brunson on, on Draymond. Is it the best decision to put you know Jalen Brunson on Draymond Green? I might entertain putting JB on clay. We talked a little bit with, uh, with Tim Cato on, you know, 77 minutes in heaven Ooh. as we recorded that, you know, in, in our, our hotel room last night, right here, we right here in this room, but we talked, Tim Cato was here. He was right there. <laughs> we talked a little bit about JB's you know defensive assignment. And I think we could see him on clay to get him off Draymond because Draymond just impacts when Draymond is setting that screen, like, like Steph is so much better at those blitzes than Devin Booker is. And we yeah, jokes, it's like, hey, better. Steph has been seeing these blitzes since he was a, a child, yeah. and he's so experienced with that. But whenever you bring a guy so small and JB over, like Tim Cato has been talking about this, like you need more size to blitz Steph, or you need more size to – to to trap Steph, so I and that's you know Draymond sets the screen so much that's when you you know have these blitzes and traps and stuff. So I would I would honestly switch that up. It's not a huge adjustment because I'm kind of zagging a little bit and saying I don't think they need to adjust a lot. But if we do have to pick one, I would I would put JB on clay. Yeah, a co couple more things that I, I think they can adjust is I, I think they have to, they have to play Frank Nilakina a little bit more, and he's mm. got to stay on Curry because the way that you guard Steph Curry is. You have to stick with him. You have to stick with him all the time. You have to be next to him. You have to stay with him. You have to contest. You have to, you have to close out under control. And Bullock and Dorian Finney-Smith have to be more connected to Curry. They have to. Because Curry, honestly, shot bad in this game. Yeah. Like, in game one, Curry, Draymond, we we sat down and listened to Draymond's podcast. And he said, we can shoot better. And he's, and he's right. Like, Curry in the first half did not do well. And it's because Bullock was, was stuck to his hip. Did a really good job. They have to be. They have to be even more connected. And I think it's going to take a couple more bodies 
on Steph Curry because mm-hmm. he's going to run Bullock ragged. <laughs> I don't think that's going to help the Mavericks. So that's why I say one of the adjustments is to play Neil Aquina more because I thought Neil Aquina had a couple of really good possessions on Curry. And you just want him out there for a couple couple stretches to defend Curry because it's going to take a lot for Bullock to do what he's going to have to do to defend Curry the way that they have to defend him. And that goes for, for the rebounds too. Like his rebounds, yeah. if Bullock is right there next to him, he can stop him in transition and get in front of him in transition. What was that one rebound he got that he ran all the way to the bucket and got, got a layup? Yeah, yeah. And Bullock was like chasing him from from behind because he didn't take a good angle and didn't didn't stop the ball. And then just, you know, Curry got a, a straight layup. I want to go back to the threes really quick before we move on to the postgame comment or the, the comments and the practice comments. Um, according to shop, shotquality.com, people have been talking about shot quality and what that means. Is that a real site? Dallas should have scored 107 points. And the Warriors should have scored 105 points. So the win probability would have been 50-50. That's 20 points difference. <laughs> That's from what lot. the Mavericks shot, like they're they got good shots. If they play that same game again and it flips, then the Mavericks win that game. It's wild. Uh, Harald Balvalgaris po- tweeted out this: the Mavericks had a point per shot of point six nine. Nice on their forty eight three point attempts in game one. So points per shot, they actually scored point six nine points per six four per the forty nine forty eight shots. You good? Those shots has had an expected points per shot of 1.11 like that is such a <laughs> stop <laughs> i struggled with that word didn't i i struggled with that whole i struggled yes, 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 sir. Sir. <laughs> that's what i do i struggled with that whole sentence the points per shot though it was it was actually 0. 0.69 it should have been 1.11 and that's just the like just with the quality of shot that they got uh, it, it's so, it, that's all it really is. And that's why I say don't overreact is my big adjustment. Don't overreact. Um, and don't overreact to the defensive looks either. They threw a ton of defensive looks at Luca, but guess who mm-hmm. knows all the defensive looks? <laughs> Luca. When yeah. I was talking to Pinson today, I said, you know, what are these, like throwing all these looks, what does that mean? He said, well, Luca, Luca's seen everything. He's seen every kind of defensive look. He's going to be able to react to it. And I, I think that, you know, It'll be fine. <laughs> Luca gave Char- the Charlotte Hornets some love today or last yeah, night in his post game presser, saying that they were the team earlier this season that gave him a ton of looks. And he said it was the most defensive looks in one game he's ever seen. Another reason not to overreact the Mavericks are 10 and 0 this season on the heels of losing mo- by more than 20 points in a game. Mm. That's a stat. I think ESPN Stats and Info tweeted that out today. Another reason. No, <laughs> Boston beat Miami. You know, after a one more actual adjustment before we move on to the comments is attack the weaknesses of the schemes. We saw it on Pool. We saw it on Curry a little bit. Attack Curry. Attack Pool. As soon as you see whatever scheme they're using and you get the mismatch that you want, attack it right away. Attack Pool. Attack Curry. Get Draymond on the ball. I was talking to Jared Dudley, and he said, you know, Draymond is incredible as this team defender. Right? He's never like the guy on the ball, but he affects everything else when he's off the ball. Get Draymond on the ball more. And I'm not saying go take advantage of Draymond and score on him. You're probably not going to do that either. No. But get Draymond on the ball so that you kick out and have other actions working while Draymond is away from the play because he just tried to follow Luka or follow Brunson all the way to the cup. And, and you know, he's kind of out of the play there. And you can run something else behind to get an open shot. I think those two things uh, on offense – things that the Mavericks have to do. Uh, but coming up, let's get into the comments that we heard at you know the post game. We heard at practice today, all kinds of really interesting stuff we heard from the guys and uh, stuff from Draymond today. We'll talk about all that and more coming up. Before we do, let me tell you about Bet Online. Bet Online is your place to go check out the odds, stats, and info, the lines, the money lines, the spread, everything you need to know for basketball, for sports in general. Go check out their odds for the playoffs right now. They have so many things open right now that are not, that are not loading in this <laughs> incredible hotel, incredible Wi-Fi, hotel baby. motel holiday Wi-Fi. Right now, the series odds, Mavs Warriors, you ready for this? Oh, I'm ready. Warriors minus 400. Ooh. It raised, it almost doubled. We've seen this game before. After game one. Mavericks plus 320. Go check that out right now on Bet Online. Let's see if they have game two up. They do. Warriors, six and a half point favorite. So, for those of you that were at the bar with us, for those of you that are confident the Mavericks can get this win and split home court 
split the first two games with the Warriors, go ahead and chat, head to Bet Online. Check out the trends in action. It's Bet Online where the game starts. <laughs> Thanks for making Lockdown NBA your first listen. Thanks for making Lockdown Mavs your first listen <laughs> for your next listen. We're firing on all cylinders today, tonight. <laughs> We went to the Golden Gate Bridge today. Uh, make sure you check out the Lockdown NBA Big Board podcast. Host Rafael Barlow from NBA Draft Junkies and author of the NBA Big Board newsletter. Who's has, at the combine right now? Who's at the combine? Had great stuff uh, as the, you know after the lottery as a mock draft. He's got player rankings, and of course, Big Boards free and available wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Isaac Harris, um, what's something from practice today that you heard that piqued your interest? Um, well, first off, go listen to our podcast that we we dropped you know yesterday. We dropped a lot of the audio from yesterday. I talked to Davis Bertans, um, Nico Harrison, Mavs GM, um, Sean Sweeney. We, Sean Sweeney, to my knowledge, hasn't done an interview since he's been in Dallas. I don't think so. Um, so talk to him about some defensive stuff. Got some good shots. And you talked to Jared Dudley, which, you know, you can't tell Nick anything now because Jared Dudley uh, and him were chatting up beside the court. You also talked to friend of the pod, Theo yeah. Pinson. Uh, Theo is is the best. But so all of that audio is on the pod from earlier uh, yesterday. So make sure you go listen to all of that. But so I'm not going to really mention a, a ton of stuff from that, even though Berton's talking about the Booker uh, conversation was Must a lot, lot of funny, a lot of fun. So we sat in with Draymond and Steve Kerr, and it was literally a good hour. Otto Porter was in that too, but I don't care about anything uh, that – uh, I care about Otto but there was nothing like substantial <laughs> in, in that for us. You know, I'm sure for Warriors be right. Don't give a damn about Otto <laughs> Porter. <laughs> um, but Draymond, so he was just of, looking at his dad on all the murals on the wall. So one of the questions that that I ask uh, Steve Kerr is, I said, "Hey, like, is there a is there a template that you are going to?" as far as game plan against this Dallas team, is there a player that you've played against, coached against, played against in a, in a playoff series? Uh, is there a team that is constructed the same way as this Dallas team that you're kind of pulling the template back out that you've played before? And he immediately went to the 2018 Rockets and James Harden and just that style of offense. He described it a little bit more. I'm trying to find the actual video from that that full answer, and I'll share it at so some point. So if you have it, send it to Isaac. Please send it to him. I'm trying to find it because I didn't like <laughs> record the audio. Um, but anyway, I thought it was a, a good a, a good answer with that. And then Draymond came in, so I asked kind of similar thing. I said, "Hey, Steve just said this, you know, about." comparing to the Mavs, how do you feel about it? Is that is that a, a good comparison? Is there what's the similarities and differences between this Mavericks team and that 2018 Rockets team? And he agreed too. And I just want people to hear that because I think the Harden Luca thing, obviously we see the stage that Harden's at now and it's like, oh my gosh, that's not Luca. There's a whole different yeah, there's a whole different angle set. But I think there is something to say like, hey Steve Kerr, who's one of finals Draymond Green, a defense player of the year, like these guys have been in the league a long time. Like they're not just pulling this out of a hat. And like, I know some people just don't well, like it, that comp, but. It, and it's about how the team is built. It's not yeah. necessarily that Draymond and Steve Kerr were saying, well, Luca and Harden are the exact same player, right? They weren't yeah. saying that. Draymond even started to go down that route when you asked the same question to him. Yeah, yeah. And he immediately responded, Houston, right? Like in the middle yeah. of your question, he was like, Houston. And he started about talk, talking about that. But he was really complimentary to Luca. Well, that talk. was him who said that? That's a Houston. I thought it was another reporter in the no, room. No, no, it was Houston. Him. <laughs> I was like finishing my sentence and somebody said Houston. And I was like, all right. So I just kept on going. <laughs> <laughs> you thought another reporter yeah, said I that I out loud? It was him. I was watching him too, so I didn't, I didn't see his mouth move. <laughs> no, it was, it was him. He's like, funny. Houston. And, but he was really complimentary to Luca and saying, you know, he's not going to give up. He's not going to give in. He's, you know, elite at this, blah, blah, blah. And it's about even, how, he, he even compared him to LeBron. He said, yeah, how, he's, yeah, he said, how Luca he pushed. runs, he runs a team a little bit more like LeBron. He started to go down that path about how they're different and he didn't want to go completely down that route. And yeah. So he, he pulled back <laughs> and then he just talked about how, you know, it is guarding that, but that's sort of the template is because that those teams are very similar. Yeah. So I just, I just want to throw it out there. I thought it was very interesting to hear how this Warriors team who obviously battled that Rockets team in the playoffs, how they're kind of viewing this Mavs team. And if, 
it, you know, if you guys listen to this, want to go back and look at maybe some of the things that that Rockets team did well against the Warriors back then. And, you know, that, that Rockets team was a special team up until yeah. they got hurt and they were. taking that Warriors team, you know, deep in that playoff series. So anyway, I just thought, it, uh, I thought it was fascinating to hear kind of how they're game planning for Dallas. Couple of post game comments after game one that I found really interesting. Jalen Brunson gave the line. We have to be better. Did you, did you I, know? I have to be better. He gave that line. So I don't know if you guys know this or not, but we had Jalen Brunson at media day. <laughs> and <laughs> The raccoon squad is laughing their heads off right now. Uh, but he gave that line. It's the line he gave us at media day talking about the Clippers series last year. It's the line that says, hey, I'm locked in. I'm ready to go. Uh, it's just sort of signals to us that Jalen Brunson is, is being really serious about the way that he played in game one and isn't accepting it. The other thing that he said when talk when asking about you know how what how do they fix what happened in game one how do they make adjustments he said I think for us it starts on the defensive end we've got to play better defensively we've got to be more connected talking just being on the same page I think that's the beginning of it our offense is going to come we'll be fine on offense we had a lot of good looks tonight we have, we trust our work ethic and our technique I'm comfortable with the shots we got tonight that will go in in game two for them it's more about the defensive end it's more about focus on that end figure out what you know what we have to do defensively yeah. get that done and i thought that's a great you know that that's a great mindset for a team because they are predicated on their defense and so much of that is determined by their offense of when you're giving up 18 fast break points yeah, and so right. many of them are because of you're missing so many threes how much is it you know we were just talking to coop in the hallway and coop was like man when you miss that many threes it affects your confidence of just how you're playing. Like it gets into your head because you're just, it feels like it's automatically one of those nights of, oh my gosh, like we just can't hit anything. It's one of those nights type thing. So I, I, I am with JB on that. I'm not worried about the offense and, and, and Luca, he'll, he'll figure some things out too. Yeah. Luca was asked about his shots and the shots that he got specifically and it asked if he thought they were, you know, were good shots. He said, I think some yes, some not. But if it goes in, I feel <laughs> I feel good about it. But today it didn't. But I think the whole team, we didn't shoot the ball great. We were 22% from three. I think we have to attack the paint more. We settled for threes a lot today. So we've got to attack the paint more. Did Luca just say he should drive and not take a step back three? That's a throwback. Well, That's I think a throwback only... <laughs> inside joke for Lockdown Maps. But... They only had six shots at the rim, right? I mean, that was... Exactly. Tim Cato asked Jason Kidd about that after the game, and, you know, Kidd kind of laughed and was like, yep. <laughs> Tim Cato looked at Jason Kidd and said, you guys only had six shots at the rim. Is that something that you guys can adjust or change going forward? And Jason Kidd goes, we only had six shots? Well, yeah. That is something we can, we can get better at. <laughs> yeah. It's like, of course, that's a really low number. Like, that is not a number we you know, aspire to be. So, But I, I bring that up because I was going to say the six shots number. It all comes back to the threes. If the threes are falling, then guys have to close out harder. Then yeah. stuff can go in the, in the lane. The Mavericks have had success driving into the paint. It's, it's not always Luka and Brunson one-on-one -on -one and just drive in. It's drive in a little bit kick out to somebody for three that's wide open a close out a miscommunication on defense and then all of a sudden they throw to somebody else or throw to Brunson throw back to Luca and then they can drive to the paint too right it all closes up you saw all those different looks the box in one the the zone all that stuff is because the threes weren't going down you can't yeah. play a zone against a team that's shooting super well from three you just can't do it and the threes aren't going down, and so the Warriors are able to play some of those other defense. It's all cyclical, right? Like, it all works yeah. together in that way. And we're back to living by the three and dying by the three, but that, that's where yeah. they are right now. That, that's kind of the Mavs' offensive game plan right now, and that's just kind of how the roster is constructed, too. What else did you see at practice or at, at uh, you know, media comments today that interested you? Um, I mean, yeah, just some of our interviews from, from that pod earlier, um, just talking with Sean Sweeney about some defensive things. Um, Nico to, you know, the smile, uh, smirk grin on Nico's face. Um, uh, you know, when I, that we obviously, that wasn't a video, um, you know, podcast or the audio is just, you know, audio format, but just the smile on his face whenever I asked him about, Hey, you know, when that <laughs> trade first happened, the KP early, trade, you know, the KP trade earlier in the year, you know, some people thought that your the ceiling of this team would be lower because of that trade. And just as his, his smile and smirk, uh, happened as I was finishing that question, then he went into his answer. It was like me reading between the lines of like, Oh yeah, you read that stuff too. And you <laughs> sat back secretly and were like, yeah, y'all think our ceiling's not going to be uh, higher. And then that. Isaac filed, followed up with, I was the one guy 
that thought the map <laughs> ceiling not, was higher. I did not. <laughs> I was one of those people. No, I, I did joke with Bertons that, hey, you, yeah, you wouldn't be in the conference finals if you're in Washington right now. But <laughs> he said, no, I would not. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> he completely agreed with you. I'll, I'll say this going back to the Draymond thing. It is fascinating. One, if you've been listening to this pod for a while, you know that I, I have a soft spot for Draymond in the sense of I... He's I, always wanted him on the Mavs. I've always wanted him forever. as a Mav, and I just... I really respect him as a player. I know he, I know a lot of you guys probably hate Draymond, and, and I get it. There's and some of the, even some of Draymond stuff today, I was just like laughing about in the presser when he's going on about how people don't know basketball and all this stuff. <laughs> but him as a teammate, I respect the heck out of him. Yeah. And we don't get to be around guys active guys very often talking about what it means to win a title and win at the big, the highest stage. And just to hear him talk about his approach to the game and approach and how to win a title. And he's such, he's so good in, with media and answering questions because he's one of the few people that's just going to tell you like it is. And you really respect that because so many players are just trained to give the, you know, the, I love HB, but the Harrison Barnes answer, the Russell just, Wilson answer, just the you know the yeah that whole thing. But Draymond's unfiltered; he's gonna give it to you like like it is. And I don't know; it's just it's really cool to hear players, active players, just talk about that and their approach to the game and how we, passionate. We probably listened to him for like 30, 35 minutes. Today. It was it was long. He we took just, a lot of questions. He took a lot of questions. We sat like the the PR guy had to actually cut off media, which is not which is not super normal in that we sat there, and I think I could have listened to him for another hour. I just yeah. I really appreciated the way that he answered questions. His I, mom called him during the middle of it, and he answered. Did call him right, right in the middle. He gets called. For, he's answering a question. He goes, "Hold on," and then his mom was like, "Yeah, no, he, he died." And we're like, "Wait, what?" She was on speakerphone. She was on speakerphone, and he's like, "I don't know." She's trying to tell me somebody that. I knew a long time ago. He's like, doesn't matter. And then he went back to answering the questions. Like, I know. Uh, but, I, I was but like, I, I didn't know what to do. I was in line. I was about to a- ask my question to him. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I appreciate that he answers the question. When someone yeah. asks him a question, he answers it and he goes through it and he explains it. And in some of his answers, he was really, he we respected the Mavericks and said, hey, you're not. Oh, this is a comment I really wanted to talk about that Draymond said today. You're not in the Western Conference Finals without doing what you do well, right? We have to do what we do well as the Warriors, and they do what they do well, which he was answering question about the threes that they got, the open threes that they got, the shots that the, the kind of shots that the Mavericks got. And it was just cool to hear, like, that he's saying, you know, it's confirming that this Mavericks team is really, really good and really elite at what they do, and that's getting open threes and taking open threes. He said they have a lot of snipers on their team, and it was just another confirming thing that a guy like that that could be a defensive player of the year every year sees that in this Mavericks team. Yeah. No, he had a lot of respect for, for Dallas and mm-hmm. coaching staff and everybody. It was a lot different than last, than last round. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, not even completely different than, than last round. But. And, they're, and, they're, and the Warriors are referencing that round, too. Like, obviously, they watched the same series that we did. Of, yeah. And even hearing Draymond say, like, hey, listen, like, this Mavericks team, they went down 0-2 to Phoenix. Yep. Number one seed in the West. So, uh, and they came out winning that series. So, it, it, they're not – he even said, he's like, we, we didn't walk out of game one saying, oh, yeah, we got this series type thing. They're expecting Dallas to fight back just like we are. What did he say on his podcast? He said, this is not a team that's going to come back and just give up, right? Like, yeah, you don't get to the Western yeah. Conference Finals as a team that just gives up. Yeah. Right? Like, they will come back. We, we need game two, and we can't just come in here expecting them to just give it up and expect the Mavericks to give it up. And uh, so that's how the Warriors are going to approach this game. The Mavericks are going to approach the game with their own little adjustments, and the Mavericks are going to try to – actually hit three-point shots but those are the adjustments we think that they should make that's the sounds from practice go back and listen to our uh, actual interviews with those five guys it's both on audio and on um, youtube so go check that out guys thanks so much for listening to lockdown maps Peace out. boom, boom.